find the strength to rise from the ashes and make a new beginning. Anyone can feel the ache. You think it's more than you can take, but you're stronger, stronger than you know. Don't you give up now, the sun will soon be shining. You gotta face the clouds and find the silver lining. I've seen dreams that move the mountains, hope that doesn't ever end, even when the sky is full. Happen. Silent prayers get answered. Broken hearts become brand new. That's what faith can do. Even if you fall sometimes, you will find the strength to rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace and grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Gathered together as God's holy people, we humbly acknowledge our need for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you come among us as Redeemer and Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come among us now in word and in sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to gather us to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands and come safely to the Paschal festivities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked this people is. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should, should your wrath blaze against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath die down, 
relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who saved them and had done great deeds in Egypt wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my behalf, my testimony is not true, but there is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one whom he sent. You search the scriptures because you think... You have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf. But you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of the Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. 
How can you believe when you accept praise from another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe in his writings, how will you believe in my words? The Gospel of the Lord. The book of Exodus carries us back through time to another way of thinking, another way of being in the world. Before science, psychology, and medicine as we know it, before philosophy and human rights, before the Magna Carta, before potato chips and chocolate, before face masks, before fever-reducing drugs, before germs were even known of. A time when the people of the earth explained existence and suffering in entirely different ways than we do now. The freed slaves following their emancipator Moses have lost hope that there will ever be a promised land and descend into debilitating doubt, even anger, grumbling against the Lord and the local leadership. The journey to freedom has become much harder than they expected. Finally, they seem to give up on God and make a new idol made of golden promises. The spiritual journey has become too hard. Now they want to replace the spiritual with something material, something shiny. They're so angry and impatient that their necks have become stiff. They can no longer bow their heads in reverence or humility. They can't turn their heads to see things from a different perspective. They've heard their former captors mock them. They were freed from slavery only to die in the desert. In a time when all things were believed to come from the spiritual realm, they believed that in this time of testing, they were to be exterminated. We can understand their fear. We've all been there. We can understand wanting to blame someone, the quest for simple answers to inexplicable challenges. In the end, God assures them there will be abundance, not punishment. That there will be more than enough, not scarcity. That there will be generations numerous as the stars in the sky. In the Gospel of John, Jesus responds to those who scoff at his teachings. Like the desert wanderers, they become disenchanted and dismissive. Unlike those who refuse the teachings of Jesus, we have heard his voice. And the divine word remains in us. We believe in the one God sent. We believe that Christ gives us life here, now, and forever. We believe Christ came in the name of the Father and we accept him as our Lord. 
We believe the Lord Jesus is with us in all things that we cannot be separated. As members of the Lord's body, we may not be together physically during this supper. But we are bound together forever by the one who testifies on our behalf. Let us pray. For God's holy church throughout the world, our vicar of Christ, Pope Francis, and for our local leadership, we pray to the Lord. For the political leadership of the entire world, for our own president of the United States, Donald Trump, and for all those in local government making decisions that shape the quality of life, we pray to the Lord. For medical professionals in every society working under great strain, and for our local hospital personnel, from orderly to nurse to surgeon, we pray to the Lord. For the sick, for those suffering from every kind of illness known to humankind, for those hospitalized, for those quarantined in their homes, for those recovering, for those facing the edge of mortality, we pray to the Lord. For the Catholic Church of Transfiguration here in Marietta, Georgia, for our Pastor Fernando and Parochial Vicar Brian, for our clerical, plant, liturgical, and executive staff, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, for all who mourn, and for all who have requested our prayers, we pray to the Lord. For those gathered here, both in this worship space and in cyberspace, for those participating live stream and for those who will watch later, for those who are spiritually united with us at this banquet of grace, we pray to the Lord. And for your intentions, which we now offer in silence before the one who hears us. Good and gracious God, hear our prayers and grant them through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that this hour sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil and always grant us your protection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given us a sacred time for renewing and purifying our hearts that freed from disordered affections, we may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with the angels and saints, we praise you. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. There Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that sharing the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Ned and Joel, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And together we pray as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. We share with one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you who are viewing Mass online, please join with me in a prayer the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace.